why is there so much resistance to new ideas in medicine and science? And this is true in any kind of science. Daniel Boston, he was the librarian for the US Congress and a well-known historian. And he said the greatest obstacle to knowledge is not ignorance, it's the illusion of knowledge. So that we all have knowledge which we are taught in our specialty. But a lot of that knowledge is not true. It's a hypothesis, it's a theory. It seems to work, okay, let's, let's do that. When he first uh, uh, reads the hypothesis that helicobacter is the cause of the peptic ulcers, yes, but uh, people at that time didn't believe him. All my bosses, they used to believe that stress caused, it, caused ulcers, because stress would raise the acid level up. But uh, maybe because I didn't believe everybody, because I'm looking for evidence base, I'm saying, well, that's not, I thought these people were just normal people with ulcer. We don't need to question any at any people, we just need to prove what we think is correct. That's my understanding, and I think that's the most important thing for me. So it's very easy for the skeptics to say, Professor Marshall, this is a harmless bacteria, and we think the ulcer comes first, and then the bacteria can infect somebody who already has an ulcer. So you're just finding an association. And so many times you read the medical news, new discoveries, and someone says, I found these things associated, but which is the chicken, which is the egg? He encourages us to believe in yourself and prove that right. Believe what you believe is right and prove that right. And nearly every Nobel Prize winner tell you this. Nobody believed them. They said it's not important. They were rejected. But I say always do one thing. Always keep your rejection letter. Many years later, if you are correct, you can actually show that review on a slide in your lecture. So that is something to aim for. One thing is believing in yourself, believe in truth, believe in science, and strive to the success. So here's Dr. Warren and I, 1984. And uh, this is a comment from some magazine. They said established gastroenterologists and scientists found it hard to accept the teaching of the two Australians. Not only were these two investigators completely unknown, but also they seemed to be supremely confident that their hypothesis was correct. So actually I'll just warn the young investigators, just try to be a little bit modest. Uh, don't tell the boss you are wrong because you know it's very difficult for your supervisor if you don't agree with him, so be, be a bit diplomatic. Maybe the whole world is against you, against your uh, discovery. You have to prove that right, and he did.